Welcome back to Sports Collecting Radio. The sports collectibles industry is always looking for ways to get new people interested in buying trading cards. And some people in the hobby think that one of the best ways would be to get former collectors back into the baseball collecting business. And one person who has come back to the hobby is Mario Alejandro of Florida, who has since uh, gotten so involved in the hobby that he started a blog on the Internet called WaxHeaven.com. Mario wrote about what got him back into collecting uh, in January on his blog. Mario, how are you doing? Good. Great to be on the show. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about your experience, uh, when you, st- why you stopped collecting for a while, and what it was that caught your eye that got you back into collectibles. <clears throat> oh, well, sure. I, I, I collected in the late 80s uh, when the packs were, you know, 75 cents a pack. You got a bunch of cards, and it was a great time to be a collector. And as I got older, uh, more and more products were coming out like um a lot of higher end stuff that i just as a teenager i couldn't afford Mm -hmm. so when i when i was 17 i just gave up on the hobby altogether gave away all my cards uh kept a few but everything else i pretty much just got rid of and i forgot all about it and 10 years went by and i was not aware of all the different things that were going on in the hobby in those 10 years that i missed out on so uh, what was specifically the uh, the note you had on your uh, your blog here, that it was a specific card, was it? It was actually a specific set. I was at the bookstore, and I uh, noticed a copy of uh, Tough Stuff, and I, and I picked it up just to see what my 1986 Donruss Jose Canseco was worth. You know, once it was worth like hundred-something dollars, now it's eight dollars. But I, I noticed an advertisement for something called Topps Cosigners mm-hmm. uh, that year, 2007, and it was an advertisement for a card. It was an autograph of Buzz Aldrin and Alex Rodriguez. And to me, you know, uh, it, pulling an autograph in a pack was unheard of. You know, even you know when I when I gave up collecting, I mean, you could get an autograph in a in a pack, but you would have to open up 500,000 packs. That's how ridiculously impossible it was to get and it was you know before the days of game use you know memorabilia as well right. so it was a shock to me so i that very same day i went out and i bought a box of cosigners and of course i didn't get the a-rod but uh it was enough to, to get me back into the hobby i loved it again so it was the uh the autograph the chance for good autographs and eventually i assume uh you were intrigued by the game used element and oh, obviously it, yeah. and, and obviously that this is something that uh from the that you not only started collecting again, but obviously wanted to share your experiences with other collectors, correct? Uh, yes, I just wanted to see. <clears throat> there's a lot of negativity uh, for from longtime collectors who have just kind of gr- gotten out of the hobby, and they complain about it's too expensive and this and that. And I just wanted to show that there are people out there that who do love collecting. You know, we spend all our, our all our paychecks pretty much on, on collecting. Myself and my wife, who's also a collector. And uh, we just want to show the positive side. You know, we record our video. You know, when we buy a box, we record them. We uh, post the reviews. Everything, everything, just to show like the positive side of the of the hobby. Mm-hmm. Even if we don't pull a two hundred dollar card, we're we're pretty happy with it. What I found interesting about your uh, situation is the fact that I think uh, the trading card business or the trading card market. Uh, a lot of dealers will tell you that uh, they've had similar type situations where. Uh, an adult collector who got out of the hobby for whatever reason maybe it was just uh you know it was just that time of their life where they were getting married or raising kids or going to college or whatever Mm -hmm. and hadn't been in the store for a long time all of a sudden you know uh, we kind of take it for granted that we think everyone knows that uh, you can now get autographs and bat pieces from babe ruth or those type things in packs of cards and and when people see this they're sometimes surprised and i take it that was your reaction too it was a rude awakening just for me the uh, just a chance to get a a game used, a piece of jersey that someone like Roger Maris or uh, Jimmy Fox or Hack Wilson, some of my all-time favorite players, something that they actually wore or they actually hit a home run with, to me it's like the most amazing thing, you know, and I, I haven't pulled any of those cards yet, but uh, I love it. I love even if it's a no-name guy who's hitting 250, you know, I, I love it. I, I love collecting all of them. So now you not only got back in the hobby, but you also started this blog, and um what kind of uh, reaction have you gotten? Because um, you were telling me that uh, you know the fact that you are in an area where there aren't a lot of stores around, uh, this blog is really a way for you to kind of um, you know stay in touch with other collectors that you can't meet at the local card shop. Exactly. Um, well, when I was growing up, when I was collecting, there was three shops just within 15 minutes of me. I could walk to two of them, and then I could ride my bike to the other. 
Today I go out and there's nothing nearby. There's a comic book shop with a little tiny display section for baseball cards, and it's all you know old stuff. There's nobody to talk to. It's kind of like a, you kind of have an atmosphere of all the old time collectors, all the new guys, just talking, discussing, trading cards, everything. Mm-hmm. And I, I get emails all the time from old collectors who have read the blog for a couple months and they just go out and buy a product for the first time and they just come back into the hobby too. Mario Alejandro is our guest. He is uh, author of the uh, blog uh, WaxHeaven.com and uh, talking about baseball cards and his experiences getting back into collecting after a 10-year absence. Um, tell us about the kind of the community that you see with collectors online because a lot of people do worry that as more stores close around the country that the hobby is going to lose kind of that face-to-face interaction with collectors. And while uh, the Internet may not be face-to-face, there certainly are a lot of options for people to uh, uh, meet others with common interests online. And I assume your blog uh, kind of, uh, you've, you've met a lot of people through that experience. It's uh, some of the greatest people I've ever encountered. Uh, just for example, a gentleman from Texas by the name of Justin opened up 18 boxes. He bought a, two cases of uh, Upper Deck Black, and I think it was Exquisite, and he bought 18 cases, and he pulled aside three cards and, and mailed them out to me. When I, when I went to open the mail, it was a printing plate, one of one printing plate autographed, and two other autographs from my favorite player, Andrew Miller. And I, I never asked for it, and, not, and nothing like that. I just he just sent it out as a gift because he was uh, happy with the website. And it's you get things like this all the time, you know. People who collect, they often, oftentimes now they don't have anyone to talk to aside from the internet, because I to get baseball cards, I can go to the Publix down in. Oh, I'm sorry, it's it's a shopping center, right. just down the street, and they have uh, baseball cards in a vending machine, and that's basically where. I, the hobby, the hobby situation has been in Florida. There's nothing around, you know. Mm-hmm. It's either you have to go online to buy something, or you have to drive an hour to find a sto- store that sells something for you. So it's it's an awesome community, and I love every every email I get, everything. Um, when uh, we talk about your story about getting back in the hobby, if you were involved in trading card marketing, do you think you would do? Um, you know, the industry spent a lot of money the last couple of years in marketing trading cards to kids and getting them uh, excited about collecting again. Um, do you think a similar campaign could be undertaken to get adults uh, interested in the hobby? And is this kind of the message that you would send to those collectors that, hey, look at, uh, if you haven't seen cards in a few years, look what we've got for you now? That would be a great idea. The other day I was on YouTube and I found an old Upper Deck commercial with uh, King Griffey Jr. on it. And mm-hmm. just it was a trading card commercial and it gave me chills. It was such a beautiful commercial, but I can't even... Think back to the last time I saw a regular commercial on television for uh, Upper Deck or Tops or any of the companies, like during a sports show, even a local show. You know, I went to the to the to a spring training game the other day. It was a big profile game, and there was one tiny little vendor selling packs, a blaster packs of baseball cards. I mean, there was nothing there that would promote baseball cards at all. Right. Well, I know that they have done some TV advertising more kids oriented, but. From an adult standpoint, uh, certainly it would, it would almost seem like uh, uh, you're suggesting that maybe some ads that involve uh, just showing the pulls you can get nowadays might be enough to oh, get some people back. Hey, that's what I've been doing at work with old, old people who never collected but were big baseball fans. I, I'll go over there with a, a Reggie Jackson game use card to a 35-year-old man who I work with who's an IT professional and he loved it so much he went out and bought two boxes of his own because he just wanted something like that players from the 70s and 80s who are long forgotten to many of us they're still being produced in cards these days so it would be perfect for them well uh, Mario uh, thank you so much for joining us and again uh, your blog is online at waxheaven.com and uh, it's really nice job I don't know if you've got some uh, writing experience in your background but uh, Uh, It's a nice-looking blog. It's got some good information on it and uh, obviously a place that uh, collectors uh, can get together and probably share some uh, similar stories with you. So thanks for taking the time to talk with us. Uh, Thank you. It was an honor. Again, uh, Mario Alejandro of WaxHeaven.com, our guest, and we'll be back on Sports Collecting Radio right after this.